Okay, so we've looked at measures of center and percentiles. Now we're going to look at measures of spread, how the data is spread out um, from, you know, different ways to measure how far it's spread out. So uh, basically there's five different ways to look at this data spread. We're going to start by looking at um, the range, the mid-range, and the interquartile range. And, um, you know, those are values that, that have meaning for us, but the one that we're gonna be most interested in is a standard deviation. It allows us to compare different sets of data with and, and sort of see how they compare to each other. It's a standardization that allows comparison across different sets of data. So it'll be the most um, convenient for us and the one that we'll use the most going forward. But it's worth talking about these other ones uh, briefly. So the range, the mid-range, and the interquartile range. And we're going to use the same set of data, 15 data values we've been using. Um, and again, I've sorted it, and we know that the we know the minimum and the maximum, 2 and 29, and we also know the mean, which was 13.8 from before. So the range is going to be defined as the maximum minus the minimum. The mid-range is the average of the max and the min, so you add them and divide by 2. And the interquartile range is the difference between uh, Q3 and Q1, Q3 minus Q1. So we'll find those relatively straightforward. Um, the range, again, max minus min, so 29 minus 2, 27. And the min range, we add those two same two numbers, 2 plus 29 is 31, and then divide by 2, or 15.5. And the interquartile range is saying, you know, how far apart are the quartiles? Q3 minus Q1, we knew that those quartiles were 19 and 9 respectively, so 19 minus 9 is 10. And these three numbers give us, um, you know, an idea of sort of what the data looks like. How far apart is it spread? It's 27 units wide. Um, what's right in the middle of the data? The middle between the max and the min is 15.5. And then how, what's the spacing between the you know, the, the inner quartiles, Q3 minus Q1, that represents 50% of the data. Um, and that's 50% of the data is now spread over those 10 numbers between 9 and 19. Okay, but we're going to be more interested in the standard deviation. So when we talk about standard deviation, we have two different formulas, one for a sample and one for a population. Um, in this case, I didn't tell you whether this was a sample or a population. So We'll do both. Um, and I'm going to go through them first with a long form in Excel, sort of like the tutorial that we went over with the long form. Um, but then once we've done that once, we're going to use the short form. We're going to use Excel's formulas to do these for us. So, you know, make sure you can do the, the long form at least once and then switch over to using Excel's formula to help you. Um, but the formula for standard deviation for a sample is the square root of this symbol here is a sum of the sum of all the values of x minus x bar, where x bar is the mean, the mean, we square those differences and add them all up and then divide the total by n minus one, where n is the sample size. Um, and then this, this, the standard deviation is, is s, which is the square root of all of that for a sample. And then what's different for a population, it's essentially the same. It's just that instead of using x bar, we use mu. Um, for the mean, instead of using S, we use sigma here on the outside, Greek letter sigma, and then sigma equals the square root of the sum of X minus mu squared divided by capital N, where capital N is the population size. So we don't subtract one from it. And then regardless of which case we're in the sample or the population, the variance is found the same way. The variance is the square of the standard deviation. Or, you know, in a sense, we have the variance usually first because it, it's before we take these square roots would be the variance. We don't really have a, a letter for the difference between population and sample. We just use V for variance in both cases. Okay, so I'm going to take these values. And, you know, if this was in your homework, online homework, or in a, in a worksheet, you could copy them or type them into Excel. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and copy. Pull up Excel. So I've already set up my Excel headers 
with x, x minus x bar, and x minus x bar squared. Um, I go over how to do this in the tutorial. You know, it, it, again, we're not going to need this for finding the long form, so you can do it once, you're done with it. Um, I know the formatting in Excel has value in and of itself, but the hard thing is to get that X bar. I cheated here and I, I used the pen to draw it in. Okay, so I'm going to paste those numbers in, paste, and I'm going to need the mean. So I know it's 13.8 already, but um, I can use my average function in Excel if I didn't know what it was and highlight the numbers I want to average, which is everything above it except the X. Tab, 13.8 is my mean, and it's in cell A17, column A, row 17. So when I come up to find these differences, I want to, I want to drag the formula down. I want to get good at that. So I start with the equal sign to say I'm going to put a formula in here. I click on the first cell across for the first value of X, and then I want to subtract off the mean, which is in A17. I'm gonna hit tab to get out of there. So that difference is 11.8. If I drag down now, notice what happens. This is four, this is clearly not four minus 13.8. And the reason is, it didn't just move the first value down, it moved both values down. And there's nothing below this 13.8. So I don't really wanna drag this formula down yet. I need to go in here. I don't want the A17 to change. So the way to fix each of the column and the rows is you put a dollar sign in front of the column. That would say don't change the column. Put a dollar sign in front of the row. That'll say don't change the row. And so now if I were to drag it down, let me hit tab first. You go to the bottom right corner like in the tutorial. Click on the mouse and hold it and then drag down to the bottom. Hit tab to get out of that or click over to another cell. Now if I look in here, this one now becomes A3 minus, again, it's the same value, dollar sign A, dollar sign 17. So we, we hold that A17 so it doesn't change. So that's the differences, and now I need to square them. So I'm gonna put equals, click on the cell to the left, and square it, which is the caret symbol, two. Hit tab to get out of here. And maybe I can make this a little bigger so we can see all the numbers. Go to the lower right corner until I get the little cross and then click and drag down to the bottom. So I need, if I go back to my formula for a second, I need the sum of those things squared. So in Excel, we just found the sum of all of them, we found all of the squares, and now I have to add them all up. And I can use the summation button up here. You could also type equals sum, but this is a little easier just to click on this. And there's the function equals sum, and it auto sums them, ignoring the headers for me. Hit tab. And the formula wants me to divide that by, for the sample, n minus 1. So I'm going to put equals this value divided by, in this case, there are 14 elements in our sample, so four, uh, 15 minus one would be, I'm sorry, there's 15 elements in our sample, so 15 minus one would be 14. And then we would want to take the square root of that. The square root is uh, the function sqrt, and I can either just type it in and then click on it, or just type it in and start taking it, square root of what? Square root of this number right before it. So my variant, my standard deviation for the sample is 7.2. I would, well, 7.233, but I would round it to one more decimal place than the data values. So these are whole numbers. So I'll round that to tenths. I round it in Excel here. 7.2. And same thing with my variance. If I square the standard deviation, it just takes me right back to here. So again, I'll round that down to one decimal place. And let's put those in our formula over here. So the sample standard deviation is 7.2, and that would have the same units as my data. So if my data were miles, that would be 7.2 miles. If my data were years, that would be 7.2 years. We didn't give us units on this data, so points, I don't know. And then the variance would be those units squared. 
So the variance is 15.3, and it would be whatever the units of the data are squared. So it'd be square miles or, um, I forget what the second one was. That's okay. And then if we instead thought, oh, wait, that's not a sample. That's the population. Well, notice everything in the formula is essentially the same. Um, the x bar would just become the mean mu. And instead of dividing by n minus 1, we would just divide by n. So back over here in Excel, I could just have another line down here and say this guy is equal to that sum divided by not by 14, but now by 15. And then I could drag the formula down from here if I wanted, and it would take the square root of that guy for me. Or I could type it indirectly. And now round that back down one more place. Ah. And we'll see that our population standard deviation is 7.0 with a population variance of 48.8. Oops, not 48.9. Probably rounded that too soon. OK. Um, and you know, once we can do the long form for both of those once, we don't need to do it again. So going over the short form, how, how do we do that? Well, both population and sample standard deviations have formulas in Excel, and you just type in STD, ST for standard, DEV for deviation, and the one is dot S for sample, the other is dot P for population. That would give us the standard deviations. And then to find the variance, um, we could just square those. And I'll just show you that real quick. It's, it's much easier because we don't need to do any of that. Let me just take our original set of data and copy it. Create a new sheet downstairs by hitting this little plus. And I'll just paste that in here. Maybe I'll put an X in here. And then paste. Doesn't like that for some reason. Let me try that again. Copy. Go back over, paste. And then come in here, equals ST DEV, so standard deviation for the sample. Do that first. Wants to know what numbers. I'll highlight the cells I want. Tab 7.2. Decrease my decimal places. Maybe increase my font for everything so you can see. And then for the population, same thing. Type equals stdev, this time dot p. Highlight my data values, a2 to a16, hit tab, and round it down, 7.0. That was my S, that was my sigma, population standard deviation, I'm sorry, sample standard deviation, population standard deviation. And so that's much quicker and much easier than doing the long form. Um, and and we, we don't wanna do the long form, but once or twice, and then from there, we're fine. We, don't, we can uh, use the short form there on out. Uh, let's see if there's an actual, there, there should be an actual function for variation. Let's just try it real quick, maybe not. My computer is freezing. Not good. So I'm going to stop the video. Oh, did I get it? I got it. Let's try it. Equals, let's try variance. Yep. And there again, there are two. One for the sample and one for the, the, the population. So the variance for the sample, we already know this should be 52.3. And the variance for the population, I'm going to use the var.p. And this should be 48.9, 48.8, and they are. Go back to my notebook, and that'll do it for our standard deviation and variance for both the population and the sample. And overall, that covers us for the measures of spread range, mid range, interquartile range variance and standard deviation.